Yeah, just you this know, is the starter cable. Yeah, it's just a you know six pin connector that plugs into here, and this is the glow plug connector. That if it's not connected, to connect it, you pull the red wire back, push it on, and let go, and then it grabs. Hmm. Okay. Okay, and then there's a data cable here that you know has an RJ11 connector on it. Oh, and you snap that in. And just snap that in. You can see it. And then there's two fuel lines. Uh, the kerosene line, which is a four millimeter OD tube, and the propane line, which is a three millimeter line. Uh, and they go into these festo fittings, and these festo fittings work by pushing back on the blue portion and tightening on the gray. So when you, when you to, to lock it, you just push it in and give it a little tug and it's locked. So it's push in, remove, push in, pull, it's locked. Okay. All right. And that's all the engine motor has. That's all the connection. That's all the connection. Yeah, it's pretty easy. Then on the accessories tray here, you have a fuel pump, and it has a cable that connects to the ECU or electronic control unit. And it's a specified fuel pump, and they're polarized connectors, so they can only go in one way. And then the pump itself has an arrow on it, and that arrow is the direction of fuel, so the input's here and the output is here. All right? Now, the, oops, the uh, a data display or GSU, or ground support unit, it has an RJ11 connector on it, and it plugs into the data bus, you just plugs it in, and then here, there's two cables that normally go to a model airplane receiver, which I'm going to presume you do not have. Yes. You do. And you can be running it directly. So in your case, I'm going to simulate exactly how you're going to use it. You can use only one cable here, and there's uh, two sets of connectors here. There's two sets of connectors here. This cable is going to connect to the airspeed sensor, and they plug in with the orange wires the signal. The brown wire is the ground. If you look on here, there's a minus, a plus, and a square wave for a signal. Okay. So you want to align on those three pins just like that. Orange, red, and brown. Now you'll also have a solenoid in the kit for the fuel. Uh, it'll be a little smaller than this one, but essentially the same thing. And it has, again, that same three color uh, connector and wire, orange, red, brown, orange is being the signal. Here again you have this square wave for the signal, the plus and the minus. And it's on the bottom set, what I call the, or the middle set of three pins closest to the fuel connector. It plugs into this one. Not to the top three, but to the bottom three. Okay? And then on this side you have the three wire cable that came off the engine and that plugs into the glow plug starter cable and then you have the RJ11 connector from the engine that plugs into the uh, a temp RPM sensor connector and then you have another uh, solenoid for the propane and it plugs into the bottom three underneath that one I just put on for the signal the bottom three pins aligned again orange, red, brown, just like the top one. And that's all the connections. Okay. And to turn it on now with this type of connection is done by applying power to the unit. So to turn it on now I have to plug it in. And it turns on automatically now. Okay. And then to turn off, you have to unplug it. That's the only way you can so do it. On off switch, you, know, no, power. you can put an on off switch here because you're not going to be flying it. Yeah. But remember, it pulls uh, peaks of like 20 amps for a few milliseconds, you know, 100, 200 milliseconds. Okay. So it needs a good switch on it. But, you know, a good heavy duty switch. But now it just turns off and off this way. Okay. So you're not going to, I'm not going to bother with the transmitter because it, it's not applicable to how you're going to use it. Is there a certain kind of light pattern or certain words we should look yes. for on the... Yeah, yeah, actually the manual described that pretty good, but I'll, I'll describe it to you. When you first get it, you can, you can connect everything up except for the fuel line. 
got the fuel line disconnected. Okay. And I have a little tube here that just goes back to my fuel source. Okay, okay. so I can nice. cycle up through. But the first thing you're going to do is you're going to purge the system. You're going to get fuel and all the air out of the, the fuel system. Okay. So to do that, we'll turn it on here. And if you hold down the select menu button, there, there's, let me explain the menu system real quick. Uh, there's several menus in here. One is for information. One is your minimum and maximums that the engine's running at. The run menu, which is currently in. The limits menu. And then there's about a half dozen more. To get to the other ones, these are sort of hot keys to get immediately to those menus. To get the other ones, you hold down the select menu button and it says here, select menu, run menu, that's where we're currently at. And you use the plus or minus key to go through all the different menus. One of them is test functions, and that's where you want to go to first. The first uh, variable in the uh, um, test functions menu is purge the fuel system. Okay. And then if you use the plus key alone, within that menu, the um, test functions, you'll have glow plug power, gas valve test, smoker valve test, fuel valve test, and back to purge system. Okay. To purge the pump, you just hold the change value button, which will run the pump and open the solenoid. Okay. Okay? You need to feel dripping now. If you want to increase the speed as you're holding this, you can hit the plus button. Oh. If you want to decrease it, and hit the minus button. Nice. Wow. All right, and I'll just leave it at a half a volt. It's a nice value to start and stop it with. So now I have all the air out of the system. Okay. Okay. Reattach that fuel line, give it a little tug, so I know it's on. And I'm going to use the hot button to go right back to my run menu. And on the run menu, it shows you the temperature, 21 degrees C. It shows I'm getting a fail safe right now, that's because I don't have an RC transmitter hooked up and operating, but that's okay. It's the top uh, uh, 0, 0.0 is the uh, actual RPM of the engine. The 8.1 is 8.1 volts, that's the power source within the battery. And then OC means off condition. The last time this engine ran, it would just tell you why it was shut down. It might have been shut down because you commanded it to, it may have shut down because there was some error in the engine or whatever, and then the error would show there. Okay. When this engine starts, a few things will change on this display. One, the uh, on this little icon here, I'm sorry, uh, that is showing you that that's the battery and it's just, it's all the way full. And as it empties, it'll just start sh showing it's getting empty and, okay. and it just starts so showing empty. Power the battery. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. when, when the engine starts, the um, battery voltage will change to the actual pump voltage, the voltage going to the pump. Okay. And uh, uh, this, will, the off condition will go away, and this will be the command RPM. That's the an, uh, RPM that you're commanding the engine to go to. And then the one above it is the actual RPM. The actual RPM, okay. okay. So that's, that's how that display will change when it starts to run. There will also be another little squiggly line up here, and that's just to show that it's being run by a remote terminal and not and by an RC system. RC system, okay. Yeah. And again, all that's in the manual, and it shows pictures of the display and all the different configurations. Do you just change the desired RPMs with the plus and minus arrows? Yeah, it, yeah it, it, almost. Almost? Um, I'm going to go through the start, we're about ready to start it now, but okay. to start it, it's a two-button thing. You're going to hold down the manual key, and then you're going to press the ignition key, and it's a toggle, okay. and that will start the engine. It'll still start the sequence to start the engine. And then to stop at any time, again, you press the manual button again and press the ignition button and then it will stop. It off. Okay. okay. To uh, run it uh, high and low in RPM, you'd hold down the ignition button and press the plus button or the minus button. Okay. And now raise it up and down. If you want to go to full power or idle immediately, you'd hold down the ignition button and you'd press the min max or the run. Run to idle. Min max to full power. Okay. Again, that, that's described in the manual, but it's good you're recording it. Um, now, when I just push the ignition button alone, now when it's not in the run mode, it, it spins the motor over. And here I can see I'm getting RPM 
on the screen and I'm putting a load on the battery and I can see oh, yeah. what happens with the battery. You can see that icon, how it oh, wow. gets okay. large. Okay. So I know everything's connected. I have uh, 21 degrees or room temperature showing for the display. Zero RPM, but it was working. When I pushed the ignition button, I saw the RPM sensor was working. So everything's ready to start. Okay. Now it's going to get locked. 